Hello everyone. So today uh, is the last, I'm going to start the last topic of CMOS and that is transistor scaling. Scaling of or making the transistor smaller every generation, or I should say generation by generation, is a, such an incredible journey of humanity, um, uh, scientists, engineers work super hard to make that transistor such a tiny transistor that today we are talking about um, the length of transistor as um, 3 nanometer and it's, it's still working. That's an amazing story. So this is the last topic but I think it will have few different parts and then let's see how many parts I end up um, creating but the the journey of transistor scaling um, is incomplete if you don't mention Gordon Moore co-founder of Intel um, died last year and uh, his prediction or you should say his observation uh, that transistors number of transistors on a die will double every almost two years is still happening as of today and maybe a little bit slowed down but i think maybe on the slow down on the intel side but i think overall it's still still happening and uh, scientists and engineers in the industry are always able to make that transistor our ideal switch or supposed to be an ideal switch um, somehow working and that's uh, amazing and uh, this slide i i came across this slide and i think this is the name of the person nikonov uh, he's the person who has uh, um, some really good slides and i thought this was really interesting as garden moore got older or they said it right it got wiser so th let's start with that uh, testing slide but this is where the um, where there are some of the data of, um, from the from the history um, the scaling journey I will first cover the journey from 500 nanometer uh, till 130 nanometer okay when transistor length got smaller than 1000 nanometer or 1 micron it, it was called submicron um, era. And I would say around 500 nanometer or less, maybe a little bit higher starting, um, different issues started coming. So I would say starting with 500, um, sorry, na nanometer down to 130 nanometer, uh, all these generations were fighting with a certain similar type of issues the challenges that experience on every time you shrink the transistors uh, or every time you make the transistors smaller so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you an overview of that and in the next parts then i will gradually go from there 90 nanometer 65 45 32 22 um, 14 10 and i'm going to cover intel technology i'm more familiar with that i spent in, uh, 19 years with intel so all the, the data that i'm sharing is is public there's nothing confidential here okay so yeah if you look at this slide in 1970 4004 that was the processor and this on y-axis is the number of transistor. So the era that I'm, I'm covering around close to 2000 where 130 nanometer was the technology. I mean, and uh, the Pentium 4 processor was done at that technology. We went into volume production. I mean production in large quantity, not just the test chip. So and this shows you how number of transistors doubled almost every two years
So here is the prediction. Now we'll, I will give you a few of the things that are happening with every generation. So every two years, the length, now here is the length. Here is the two dimensional um, uh, transistor, NMOS transistor that have been running all over this CMOS series. So you have a gate, you have two N plus, you have source, you have train, and then you have a channel. Length from here all the way here is the length and L. So every two year, the length uh, shrunk by 30%. So if it was one, um, then it became 0.7. So if this is your die, assume it rectangular die, 0.7x on this side, 0.7x on, on this side, when you calculate area, 0.7 by 0.7, that is 0.5 square. So every two years, the area of the transistor went down by 50%. Or you can say that in the same area, the number of transistors that you can put actually those double. Okay, so you understand that scaling thing? Scaling on, on length. And here is tell you that why we want to shrink the transistor. It's an, a Moore's law is not a, nat a nature law, right? It's a, it's a way that in order to be economical, every two years, we want to, for the same dye, we want to put more functionality in, into it. Um, as you put more functionality on it, you, you, can, you can charge more, or you can keep charging the same amount by bringing something new to the clients. So you can see that transistors doubled, and now you can say that if, if the dye cost is the same now your transistor cost for each transistor is actually became cheaper so here it is this yellow thing is the number of transistor going up and again i took this slide I'm, i want to give credit to this person for the, creating this beautiful slide and the dollar cost per transistor came down as the number of transistors go up okay price is going down and that was really the key thing why it was kept happening. Okay, and this was the Garden Moore paper in 1965 where the prediction was done. So every two years, you already look at the length. Every two years, the delay was also made to shrink by 30%. So it was one whatever unit became 0.7 frequency is one over time period one over 0.7 which is 1.5 so 50 nearly 50 percent increase in the frequency happened earlier on it kept increasing a lot more but later on especially this 500 down nanometer down to 130 nanometer this is what the scaling of the frequency was so he, this, this thing summarize all that. So length got down every two years by 30%. Uh, Area got down. Number of transistors went up, double. Delay went down. As a result, frequency went up. Then since we were able to reduce the, the transistor length, we could make it work with a less voltage, as you have seen in the previous CMOS. That okay, um, delay is 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 um, function of the voltage. Okay, when you reduce the voltage, delay actually increases. But since we are also um, uh, delaying, uh, reducing the length, um, we can keep getting delay improvement. But the power was also important factor. Dynamic power is proportional to the voltage. So voltage has to be reduced because uh, dynamic power, I will show you that chart there was a critical factor. Now as length got smaller, you get a smaller channel and we were able to bring the thickness of the oxide. Is Where is the transistor? Uh, this is the thickness. This was brought down and this is a traditional scaling that okay, you bring length down, you 
deduce the t-rex and the reduction of t-rex was done that because you now need um, more control on it it's a smaller channel right you want to have a tighter control over it and you want it to keep the uh, we will talk about the threshold okay the voltage went down as a result if you remember the dis uh, sorry the difference between voltage and vt is actually important factor for delay so if you don't bring vt down the delay doesn't go down so you have to bring vt down the i on the on current is this, which also the same thing as delay so as the on current the, there is more current which also means the delay is less it gets faster the off current when transistor we think that it's less than vt get to source voltage and transistor need to be turned off transistor actually still leaking and what's happening is as we going down that off current is going up so kind of i summarized all those different factors that are going up and down now this slide is important again thanks to nikonov um look at this one from two micron we coming all the way this is 22 nanometer okay anyway i'm interested more on, on around this area for now because you look at this at this curve is this blue one is what's called cv over i it's picosecond is delay and you'll probably be thinking what is cv over i you will uh, read uh, get this a lot in the in the papers that intel published during that time uh, this is c v over i v over i is r as i told you that delay is really rc so look at all the capacitance of the transistor the resistance those are offering so that gives you a nice way of measuring a quickly delay so that's why it's in picosecond so delay got smaller smaller with every generation okay see uh, now about this one this is dynamic power cv square and that got down too because voltage got down so dynamic power if you go back that switching power the capacitor gets charged and discharged that is really going down because we are dropping the voltage and that's those are really the key advantages of every time we do the scaling you want to go a smaller process not a smaller technology node because it will be faster and will have a lower dynamic power but here is the important thing this red thing this is the off current now ideally this should be zero because it, the the switch that we're trying to build with the transistor when you turn it on it has a lot of current through it okay and when we want to turn it off nothing flows through it but actually as you have seen in my past videos that is not the case as you and i'll show you again as you make the transistor smaller the current off current increases and you can see that here it went all the way there but again i'm interested in here so you can see how much increase that was happening during this time 502 and certainly maybe around 0.25 micron by the way when i say 0.25 micron it's the same day as calling 250 nanometer okay sometimes 0.5 micron is same thing as 500 nanometer these days we don't talk about microns we are into three nanometer five nanometer but um at that time uh, if you look at different search paper of, of that time it, the, the people will call 0.5 micron this is two micron people at that number were not even talking about nanometer that's why when it became less than one micron this era was called sub micron era okay so hope that is clear this is another one now again we are talking about kind of 93 to 2001 time these process names again these publicly are known the, within intel uh, each node was uh, called a code name and those were the code names within intel uh, but the industry industry knew those with uh, uh, with the generation this was 0.5 microns 500 nanometer in 95 and this is the time when it went into production so a typical phase is you do a test chip first to check that or your, your technology is working um, you what kind of current power density yield and all those 
but from that time till you actually uh, print chips in millions and give it to customers that's really the production the production for example 500 nanometer happened in 1993 0.35 and 130 nanometer was production went into around this time all right now that doesn't mean that okay there were still chips for example even this time which were on 190 nanometer is this is the leading as the main pc server uh, sorry pc server pc processors of that time okay now this is the gate length now you see something happen around this time 350 nanometer or 0.35 micron before whatever the generation name was the gate length was the same and here the same but after that let's look into this one when it was 250 nanometer generation the actual gate the smallest gate length intel was able to achieve was 200 nanometer and from here it came the concept of different process node within the technology so maybe and there, there you will see later on i'll explain some of the problem with the smallest um, length transistor short channel short channel effects it was always good to go a little bit for those circuits or for those dies which or for those applications which um, doesn't need that high performance um, and suffer from the high off ground um, they can live with a little bit higher but the leading edge can go with this one the most critical for the frequency and similarly 180 and 130 nanometer actually the gate length was um, 70 nanometer already so this is the kind of call uh, shrink within the process node okay so 130 was already here 70 nanometer all right i think we are getting into another topic right now so i will i will stop it here um, and go do another part in the next video hope you found it interesting hope you are excited to learn more about that i'm super excited about teaching this stuff too so see you next time